Good morning. Welcome to Sunday, January 10th. This Sunday after Epiphany Sunday is usually celebrated as, quote, the baptism of the Lord. In the Christian calendar, what that means is that uh, following the celebration of Christmas and the birth of Christ, we have a very short period and then remember the way in which the three wise men came to begin to introduce Jesus to the rest of the world. And then um, following that, we begin to focus on the very, very beginnings of ministry in the life of Jesus. And it's all compacted, of course, but that's why we read the scripture from the baptism of Jesus today. I won't be preaching from that text specifically, but we will be remembering this as a Sunday when we begin to reflect on the early ministry of Jesus. And then as we go through January, February into March and Lent, of course, we deal with the full ministry of Jesus leading up to Holy Week. Today, we will be... Uh, continuing our series on prayer, we will be dealing with the importance of adoration and what that really is in prayer. What does it mean to adore God? How do we learn about what, in fact, adoration is and why it's so important in our prayer lives? We will celebrate Holy Communion this morning. And so I remind you that if you do have communion elements with you, if you could uh, avail yourself of those near the closing parts of our service, we will celebrate the sacrament. I want to thank everyone who is being so diligent in continuing their tithes, offering, and giving. We will, of course, uh, dedicate those gifts on our altar to the Lord and to that uh, the ministry of Christ that is entrusted to us. Thank you so much for continuing with that. It's so important in this uncertain time and pandemic and other struggles. And we uh, like to think that we're doing our best to be responsible with gifts and offerings, that we're trying hard to continue the ministry of the gospel. Some folks have asked me about when we might be able to return to the building in, in our distanced way for Sunday morning worship. And I'll simply say that I, I understand the question and I'm not really sure when. Uh, we'll monitor the situation in our county and um, in broader areas. We have not received direction from our bishop 
at this point regarding when it might be safe to try that again, I am uh, mindful that during this past week, we actually had some days when as many as 4,000 Americans died from the coronavirus, which is uh, a very sad uh, record of sorts in terms of this continuing to end the lives of people. So this is a very, very serious ongoing um, struggle for our nation. And we want to be sure that before we do come back into the building together on Sunday morning that uh, we are assessing the situation. So stay posted, not yet. I'm told the vaccines, uh, according to policy, uh, may be available for folks 65 and older beginning Monday. I believe that's true. Uh, I'm looking uh, at Linda Campbell, who is uh, not only one of our music ministers, but a health, a retired uh, healthcare professional. Uh, just be aware of that. I need to offer a word of apology today <laughs> about the Upper Room magazine. We usually get, I believe, about 50, maybe not, I may be wrong, but we get a batch, so to speak, of the Upper Room devotional magazines and we have them available in our narthex, typically. And your pastor uh, made a decision the day or two before Christmas that the Upper Room magazine that would start January 1st might not get out to people because we were closing the church building for a week or so. And so when I and Liz... Uh, and some others were making some Christmas calls, we shared the upper room around town. What that meant is uh, that on the good side, I was able to share the upper room with some folks who maybe haven't tried it before and may enjoy it as a devotional guide. But then I found out this week some folks who do rely on that uh, stopped by the church building and we were out. I'm to blame. I'm sorry about that, and uh, we'll look into uh, what that means. So please accept my apology for going uh, gung-ho and sh sharing those before Christmas time. Action Ministries continues its work for those interested in knowing when the next mobile pantry will take place. That's when the large truck from Feeding America comes to a place in town and there's a distribution, usually on an afternoon, 3.30 to 5-ish. I'm told the first mobile pantry of 2021 won't take place until February, so we're, we're not missing anything at this point. And I'm also told that the Action Ministries Board will make uh, some scheduling decisions in a week or so about the schedule. So stay tuned. We won't keep you in the dark, but the mobile pantry, not quite yet. I do remind us, though, that every Saturday morning, between 10 a.m. and noon, the Action Ministry Food Pantry is alive and active, and many of our uh, congregation already participate. I'm very grateful for that. We have officers from our church and others who serve diligently. There's always room for more help. The building on uh, Main Street we usually gather about 9.30 Saturday morning for a prayer, and then we close at noon, and we help distribute food to folks who are in need. If you have never volunteered before, there is a little bit of a check-in process to get you registered as a volunteer, so you might want to come a little before 9.30. Give me a call if you have any additional questions. Finally, um, I don't want to avoid the obvious that uh, we have had a, just an absolutely uh, heartbreaking week in our nation, and I won't offer more words about that right now, but I have prepared a few words for our time of prayer, and especially a prayer for our nation. 
Kathy, if you could lead us in worship. Good morning. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of God's name. Worship the Lord in holy array. The voice of the Lord is upon the water. The God of glory thunders, the Lord upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of God is full of majesty. Let us praise the name of the Lord. Our opening hymn is All Glory, Laud, and Honor. You have your words at home, and you can sing. It's number 280 in the hymnal. Please join me in the prayer. Living God, when the Spirit descended on Jesus at his baptism in Jordan's water, you revealed him as your own beloved Son. You anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the third chapter of Exodus, verses 1 through 5. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, he led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, 
for the place on which you're standing is holy ground. Our second reading is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, all say, glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Our gospel reading this morning comes from the first chapter of Mark, verses 9 through 11. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of, the, of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to pray with me. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm a very blessed person in many ways. I uh, freely admit it. And one way is the small manner here and there in which Liz often does nice things for me. I probably shouldn't confess this, but every now and then when she goes grocery shopping, she comes home and there's a candy bar tucked in the bag that wasn't on the list. And she says, I picked that up for you. So, oftentimes, if this happens, I take it, and I'm grateful, and later in the day, I might talk with her in the kitchen, or upstairs in the, her office, or something, and in the course of conversation, I'll say something like, I love you, and she'll get a snarky look on her face, and say, because I bought you a candy bar? Of course, she's joking. But it reminds me of an important distinction in the faith. I guess only a pastor or somebody who has uh, dug into a lot of these issues of the faith would take a story about a candy bar and, and make, make it into a comparison of faith. But you see, when she does something nice for me, I'm grateful for it, but I don't love her simply because she has done something nice for me. 
I love her because of who she is and not necessarily what she has done. That's a dynamic that is all over today's consideration of what it means to adore God or to practice what we might call adoration in our prayers. I mentioned last week that I would like to take the next four Sundays and talk about prayer in terms of an acronym, A-C-T-S, or ACTS. A, adoration. C, confession. That's next Sunday. T, thanksgiving. And S, supplication, which is uh, really going to God to ask for something. And we'll talk about that in many ways. But today, I want to focus on adoration. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. And I'm especially aware today that there is maybe a distinction that could be made between adoration and thanksgiving. They sound like they're so similar and they sound like they both might fall under the notion of praise of God. I adore you, Lord. Adoration or thanksgiving. Lord, I'm grateful for this, or we are grateful for that. That maybe adoration and thanksgiving in some ways all fall under praise. But I'm suggesting that there is a distinction, and that it might be a good thing for our spiritual lives to consider the distinction. What I'd like to leave you with today is this. Adoration is respect and praise of God simply for who God is. Thanksgiving is praise of God in response for what God does. It may not be a hard and fast distinction in uh, philosophy we have a highfalutin way of saying that some things are distinctions without a difference, meaning there's really no difference, but we try to make them sound like they're different. There might be a bit of that dynamic here today, but I think it may be helpful if we pause and tarry a little bit and consider what it means to praise God simply because of who God is and not necessarily because of what God does, though that's perfectly legitimate, too. I was reminded of this in studying the story of the call of Moses in Exodus 3. You know the story of Moses and, and how he is struggling with his own identity in being close to the royal family in Egypt and yet at the same time uh, not fully a part of the family and then marrying into another family uh, that is outside of, of much tradition. And then one day he's minding a flock and he sees a bush on fire. You could almost imagine the uh, news reporters in our day shoving a microphone in the face of Moses if he were with us today and saying, Moses, tell us, what was it like to look and find the burning bush? And he might say something that maybe we've been inclined to say before in our own lives, like, there I was, minding my own business. And this happened. This event must have come as a deep surprise and a mystery. And perhaps even an event that struck some fear in Moses. After all, how would we feel if we came upon an experience like that? And the dynamics of the story are really the dynamics of a call story. This is a kind of snippet of narrative, if you will, in the Old Testament where someone is called. In the book of Isaiah, there is a call. 
And the prophet responds, here I am. In Jeremiah, there is a call, remember? And he resists and yet obeys. This call of Moses has a similar pattern, even though it's placed among a bigger story about a bush and everything. Moses turns aside to see what in the world is going on. And he hears the voice of God. Moses! Moses! Notice twice, often called a double summons. This tells us that something serious is happening. And Moses responds the way many people who are called respond. Here I am. Here I am. This beginning of the story of the burning bush indicates that Moses knows he is standing before a superior presence, an awe-inspiring reality. Moses knows that his response is first and foremost one of obedience. No doubt God had been active in the life of Moses before then, Moses may not have been very much aware of this activity, but we certainly can say that God had been active in the life of Moses. But to this point, there does not seem to be the open, obvious recognition of the ways in which God had been active in the life of Moses. And so the obedience of Moses is not because he finally understood all that God was doing, but somehow Moses understood that he was in the presence of a divine reality. In other words, Moses obeys because of who God is, not necessarily because of what God does, even though God does wonderful, wonderful things. In the conversation, there is this interesting uh, and practical kind of direction from God where God says, Moses, take off your shoes or your sandals. Take off your footwear, man, for you are standing on holy ground. We might consider what was going through Moses' mind in that moment, and of course we don't know with any kind of definition, but at that point he is told that the place where he stands is sacred. And Bible scholars invite us to dig deeper. Why is that space sacred? Because it is a sanctuary? No. Because it is a place dedicated by humanity for the worship of God? No. Because it is special, it is the temple that Solomon eventually built? No. Why is that ground holy? That ground, my friends, is holy simply because God is there. Whether or not God does anything in particular, God's very presence, simply who God is, makes that ground and that space holy. So what is the meaning of adoration? It is really a recognition of value, not a response to blessing, per se, but a recognition of value. It's not the whole faith, but it's a very important part of faith. To adore God is to recognize the supreme value of who God is before, after, 
around, perhaps, thanking God for what God does. In our prayer lives, we can benefit by honoring the dynamic of adoration. Not simply going to God when something good happens to us that we are thankful for. Not simply going to God when we are aware of having committed a particular sin to confess. Not simply going to God when we want something in supplication, in asking. But going to God simply because we recognize who God is as this majestic being who is with us. One of the dangers in looking at acronyms like ACTS, ACTS, is to turn that into some wooden formula. Now I'm going to pray adoration. Then I'm going to pray confession. Then I'm going to pray thanksgiving. Then I'm going to pray supplication. I know it doesn't happen like that. It doesn't need to happen like that. But friends, at some point in your conversation with God, please consider and be aware that perhaps even before you express gratitude, that along with expressing honesty and confession, and certainly in a way that is not the same as asking for something, simply recognize the value of God and adore him. I had a friend once who was in a relationship that was kind of troubled, maybe not the healthiest. And of course, I'm sharing this in a way so that I'm respecting my friend's privacy. This is some time ago. And the friend talked to a counselor or someone this friend could trust. And the friend shared with me afterwards what she was told. And in the course of the conversation with the counselor, the counselor looked my friend in the eye and said, you deserve to be adored. You deserve to be adored. At first, my friend resisted this comment because it seemed like inviting a kind of inflated sense of the self, seemed like being prideful or, or demanding, you know, some kind of treatment. But that's not what the counselor meant. We often think of what it means to be respected, to be treated with dignity, to be adored, if you will, on the human level, in terms of, what we've done to deserve it. The gospel of Jesus Christ and the witness of the prophets in the Old Testament are not grounded in what it is we deserve or don't deserve. They're grounded in our created value and the redeemed value. When Jesus Christ went to the cross for each and every human being and rose that we may have life. You deserve to be adored. It may take some time to sit with that notion on the human level, but my friends, <laughs> just imagine how true that statement is of God. God deserves to be adored. Not always because of what God does, though God does glorious things, but simply because of who God is. Let's remember that dynamic in our prayer lives. Amen. I'd like to share uh, some updates relative to our prayer life together as a congregation. 
and for some friends and family. We will pray the Lord's Prayer a bit later when we celebrate the sacrament. Shirley Leyland who passed away on New Year's Day, will be remembered and we will share gratitude for her life and witness on Friday, January 15th. The memorial service will take place at Clark Chapel at the funeral home. There will be visitation on Friday at Clark Chapel from 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 p.m., and the service will follow there at Clark Chapel at 1 p.m. We had the very sad news that Bill Mercero, who had been struggling for some time, passed away last Monday morning. We invite you to hold Mary Jo and her family in prayer. Mary Jo has shared with me that a memorial service is being planned for a later time, uh, perhaps sometime in the spring. Dave Briegel is now at the Timbers and is uh, working on some rehabilitation before he goes home and hit this long battle with uh, COVID. We uh, hope that Dave might be able to get home but we're not exactly sure when that might take place. Carol Herder has come home from some time of rehabilitation in Baton Harbor and is now with family at her home in Dwajak trying to regain some strength. The Peters family has shared with me a few prayer requests. Uh, John uh, Skip Peters, this is Dan Peters' uncle, is having a tough time in Borges Hospital, Kalamazoo, with two blood clots in his lungs. So we want to remember Mr. Peters. And Laura Knapp, who is Becky Peters' sister-in-law, is at Lakeland Hospital in St. Joe with, with some blood pressure issues. So if we could keep uh, Becky's uh, sister-in-law and her family in our prayers. Finally, I would like to try my best to say a couple of appropriate words uh, as we keep our nation in prayer. Uh, I've struggled a lot. I've struggled mightily with what I might say because in the face of uh, tragic events and such uh, sad things, there might be a temptation for pastors to say too much. And so I want to make sure that I'm checking my own experience of what took place in our nation's capital last Wednesday because it is surely a shocking uh, and upsetting thing. At first, I was determined to put all of my feeling aside and only offer a short prayer and I would like to focus on prayer in a moment. But I also feel that I need to be honest with you and share uh, what many are feeling so you know where I am. My heart breaks for our nation right now. I'm just a broken-hearted guy and citizen right now. And I would be less than honest if I didn't say out loud that what took place in the violent insurrection at our nation's capital was not patriotic, was not according to the best principles of American government and democracy, and most especially, it was not in any way Christian. And so the prayer that is on my lips most often these days is, Lord, have mercy on us. Let us pray. God of all ages, in your sight nations rise and fall and pass through times of peril. Now when our land is troubled, be near 
to correct and save. May leaders be led by your wisdom. May they search your will and see it clearly. If we have turned from your way, Lord, reverse our paths and help us to repent. Give us your light and your truth. Let them guide us through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of this world and our Savior. Amen. Now is the time to return some of what we have been given. And we'll pause and listen to Scott with his offertory. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we have and all that we are, that we may praise you not only with our lips, but with our whole lives, turning the duties, the sorrows, and the joys of all our days into a living sacrifice to you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
When the, <clears throat> when the pastor struggles with these little cups, I hope you'll understand. I think maybe we all do a little bit. Just... I invite you to join with me in the communion liturgy or the prayers that uh, help us celebrate the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now with the confidence of the redeemed children of God, let us join in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Friends, the gifts of God offered freely for the people of God. I invite you to receive the body of Christ. I invite you to receive the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Holy God, in this time of trial, Sustain us, support us, correct us, and change us. That among a world that hurts, we may stand for you. That in a world that struggles with disease, we may be signs of healing. And Lord, when that disease is of soul and heart, May we be faithful witnesses of your redemption. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn is One Bread, One Body, which is 620 in the hymnal. At home, you can sing along. Now may God, the Creator Almighty, the Lord who is worthy of adoration, may God, the Son, Jesus Christ, 
who came to die and live and rise for us. May God, the Holy Spirit, who surrounds us, cajoles us, soothes us, heals us, and guides us, abide with you. Amen. Thank you.